We talked yesterday with Angel Guria, the Secretary General of the OECD, and he said that we are way behind on plans to, for the long-term planes under Paris to get to 2050. There are only, I think it is, 19 countries have thus far come up with a plan out of 190, I'm sorry, nine countries out of 190. Where are we? I think that uh, uh, in Europe we continue to lead this uh, effort and we are very glad about the progress we achieved over the last few years uh, because uh, Colin I think described it very well in Europe we are trying to do it through the collective effort so we are the first uh, major economy which already transposed uh, the Paris commitment into the binding European laws and on top of it we increased our ambitions. So we expect that uh, by 2020 all our member states uh, would uh, really uh, reach the targets uh, we set for, for all of them by that time. And for 2030 we expect that we would reduce the greenhouse gas emissions by definitely more than 40 percent, more than we committed into the Paris and we will have uh, 32 percent uh, of energy in our system from renewables. So we work uh, on uh, the European wide basis, but at the same time, we are also motivating our member states to develop their own national strategies how to get there. Because currently, we are in a situation that it's not enough uh, uh, to deal with the power sectors only. We have to make much progress in a clean mobility, meaning to have more and more electric cars on the road. We have to deal with agriculture to make sure that uh, agriculture is done in a more right. sustainable way. And we are also investing uh, a lot in smart buildings because we know what kind of potential smart buildings can bring to the energy savings and, yeah. <coughs> and greenhouse gas uh, emissions cuts. Right. Right. So, Mars, take us into the economics of this for a moment. Boston Consulting Group just recently came out with a study, I'm sure you're familiar with it, that said that basically a country like Germany can actually pay for and do better than pay for some of these long-range attempts to really cut, cut emissions. But, but there's a substantial upfront investment. Is that what you see? Does this pay for itself? And who's going to make that substantial upfront investment? Yeah, I think that uh, uh, we... Uh, paid quite a lot for, for being a pioneer, especially the Germany, because I think we had to do, you're absolutely right, the major upfront investment into developing the new technologies. The solar panels, as you know, came from Europe. We are number one in uh, wind uh, power productions. We are uh, investing enormous amount of money in better electricity interconnection and so-called smart grids, because of course, if you have renewable energy, it's great, it's clean, but, but it's intermittent. So we have to learn how to channel it in all directions, how to store it, and therefore we put so much uh, emphasis emphasis on developing new concept of the uh, green uh, battery, not only for the cars, but also for our industry and, and for our homes. We are permanently investing in improving the uh, infrastructure, so we have a special uh, plans for that in Europe. For example, for the next uh, European budget, we, we allocated more than 300 billion euros uh, just from the uh, EU money for climate related projects and we also are uh, very clear that we want to continue to be number one uh, donor and partner for uh, Africa, for the neighboring countries because we know that if you want to make sure that we change the reality on the ground we have to help them to get the basic access to electricity. We very often forget that 1.4 billion uh, people on this planet do not have access to electricity and they cannot do it in our former fossil way. We have to help them with the smart grids, with the renewables, with solar our panels and therefore we are going to invest 44 billion uh, of euros uh, into Africa neighborhood uh, in the next uh, few years. Well, we talked about, you know, states in the U.S. versus uh, Europe as a whole. There's also the company initiative, and we spoke to Bob Dudley, he's the CEO yeah. of BP, who's been front and center on the oil and gas uh, climate initiative where Chevron and Exxon and Occidental just joined. Here's what he had to say about methane emissions. Yeah. We put our shoulders together and started working together, reporting it, and developing the technologies to measure methane. We know it's really important. Natural gas has got a great role, a mm -hmm. really important role in climate change and the transition, combining it with renewables and other things. We've got to make sure it doesn't leak. So satellites, drones, technology, infrared, companies coming together, and now three big U.S. companies have joined us. Sounds great. Sounds really good. Methane emission tackling, right? They're going to be like one billion in R&D. Is that enough to move the needle a little off from where you're concerned? I think we need the efforts on all levels and therefore also I was so appreciative of the One Planet Summit because it shows that actually we need multilateralism, we need collective effort, we need global action and I think here we, uh, we need all the efforts together on the state level, uh, on the level of the cities and I, I, I have to say that the mayors all over the world are our best allies because they are first to tackle air pollution, they are first to tackle uh, the mobility issue, they are first to tackle health uh, 
problems linked uh, with, the, with the air pollution. And of course, we need the corporate leaders who are so uh, forward looking and they know that uh, they need to contribute uh, to the, uh, tackling the climate change. And therefore, I would say that uh, unique gathering we just had here in New York, where you, uh, where you have uh, that group of business leaders, uh, mayors, uh, politicians, yeah. and activists is act actually quite unique because it just showed that all of us could contribute, but we really have to do it together and we have to go in the right direction. But is it enough? Because if you take a look at, say, the emissions that's coming out of China, is what you do in the EU and the U.S., what companies do, going to be enough as long as China's in there and unable to truly switch to any kind of alternative yeah. energy? I think that we, we have to be honest that we are not, not there yet. I mean, we are currently uh, finalizing all the preparation for the uh, COP24 conference in Katowice, where we have to actually assess what was our global effort since we signed the Paris Agreement. And I'm pretty sure that the conclusion uh, would be that we need to do more. But what I really see different, if I compare the situation between now and the situation in the past, is uh, that despite the decision of the high, White House to leave uh, the Paris Agreement, that we have that mobilizations on all these levels I, I just referred to, and we start the process, and, and I, I am a strong believer in um, also private sector activities, because in Europe we have proven that you can cut your emissions, as we did since 1990, by 24%. You can grow by almost 60, can grow by almost 60%. Yeah. And at the same time, we created millions of jobs in the renewables. So I think we proved that there is a business sense in these decisions, and that it will be the combination of the responsible for the planet, business initiative, and doing the right thing, feeling, which will get us there.